Welcome to Atoms and Elements Part 2B. This lit video lecture will focus on valence electrons and the octet rule. Let's get started. Now elements with the same number of valence electrons, and remember that means outermost, occur in the same column, right? And the name of a column is the group, all right? So this makes it really handy when we're looking at the periodic table. The number of valence electrons is simply equal to the group number um, for a column. Now, um, they've updated the periodic table, and so this really works well for the Roman numerals. With the newest addition, you have to look for the number in the ones place. And so, um, it's a little hard to see here. Let's, yeah, we'll just go with it. You, ha you have your periodic table. So for example, here where it says like group 13, right? It's the three is in the ones place. So this group would have three valence electrons, right? So anytime we look at the top of the periodic table, we have the group number. We know how many valence electrons there are. Now, um, what we're going to learn about in more detail today is that valence um, electrons on metals are lost to empty their valence shell to get back to having the octet, right? And so when we lose electrons, right, remember electrons are negative, so if we lose electrons, we're forming cations which are positive. And now nonmetals, they gain valence electrons to fill the valence shell, right? So we're going to add electrons to create octet, right? And so by gaining electrons, we form anions, which are negative. All right. So here is, right, so if you don't, if the periodic table doesn't have it, then we just add it with our mind's eye. This stair-step line creates the partition. And we'll like, we'll loop around a little bit here, right? So everything to the left is a metal. And everything to the right is a non-metal. All right, now, um, here hydrogen, hydrogen is very interesting. We typically show hydrogen here. All right, but it is a non-metal, so you can also think of hydrogen living over here. All right, it's one of the only elements that can be both a cation and an anion. All right, so anytime we look at the periodic table, we see this stair-step line and we recognize all the elements to the left are metals and the elements to the right are non-metals. And then we can take what we've learned, right, that this is the alkali metals, right, plus one, alkaline earth, plus two, there's our buddy aluminum, right, plus three, right, loses those three valence electrons. Carbon, for our, for our course, we're not going to worry about ions forming there. Let's move over here to the nonmetals, right? So here's group 17, or group seven, so there's seven valence electrons, right? So we just add one, ele we just need to add one, that's why it's a minus one. There's our halogens. Oxygen, all right, oxide and sulfide, and then nitride and phosphide, right? Now in the middle here, right, here's those tricky transition metals. They have variable positive charge. All right, so, um, so we can see that ion formation is driven by the number of valence electrons. So let's make sure that everybody feels confident with this. Let's work a few practice problems, okay? So if we look here, for example, right, calcium. Here's our calcium, right? So it has two valence electrons, and if you've already memorized it, right, we know that, um, oops, I don't know why I did that, right? Calcium, two plus, right? And then there's our buddy aluminum right there. So it has three valence electrons. So it's plus three. 
And I think sometimes the anions are a little trickier. So, but here we've already practiced, like here's oxygen. So we'll circle that right here, right? So that's group six. Or 16, right? So we do the one. So there's six valence electrons, right? So we need to add two for octet. Okay, so that's why oxide is minus two. And then last but not least, here's bromide, right? Group seven or 17, so it has seven valence electrons, so it only needs one to form the octet, right? So the metals and the nonmetals gain and lose electrons to create the octet. Let's look a little more closely at this. So, we can see now how the chemical properties are determined by the number of valence electrons. So that's the octet rule, right? Atoms gain, lose, or share electrons to create full valence shells. All right. And that's where we get our octet. Oops. Okay. And so we're going to focus for this um, series on gaining and losing, right? So that's our ionic compounds. And then on our next class section, we'll look at covalent compounds and how they share electrons. All right. And so we can see that the type the compound types are um, determined by the type of chemical bond, and that's the attractive force that holds, you know, two or more atoms together in a compound. So let's put this all together, um, right? So ionic compounds are always going to have a cation and an anion, right? And there, so for example, we could have Let's look, right? So here's magnesium fluoride, right? Magnesium, group two, alkaline earth, it has a plus two. And so that's why we need two fluorides to balance the charge. And then this is the schematic of an ionic compound. They're, I think they're a little trickier to visualize because they're like little magnetic balls. They're attracted together. There's this electrostatic attraction Right? Um, there's no visible bond to see. We just have to imagine it. We just imagine that just like the positive and negative poles of magnets would be attracted to each other, the positive and negative charges are attracted. All right. With covalent compounds, right? Oh, so that would be here, right? So this was electron exchange finish up there, Le electron transfer for ionic, right? Lost and gained. For covalent, it's electron sharing. All right, and so that's the covalent bond. And so we'll just do a very simple, right? We'll just do a hydrogen, H2, has a hydrogen, the, right? There we go. So here are our two shared electrons. Right, and so covalent compounds, like I mentioned, we'll get to um, later, but we're just kind of seeing how the, the rules come into play. And let's summarize now. All right, so the stair-step line is a really big deal because ionic compounds are going to have the metal and the nonmetal, where covalent compounds are only going to have two nonmetals. So remember, the first thing we want to do when we look at a compound is look at the elements in play and see whether we have metals and nonmetals or two nonmetals. Right? We have electron transfer here, so we're going to have cations and anions with full charge. 
Here we have electron sharing. Um, because they're, um, the cations and anions can come together in a variety um, like if you look at like salt, right? We have little crystals of salt or big crystals of salt. Those are ionic compounds, right? There's no discrete molecule. So we call these salts, right? Or we talk about the crystal lattice. And they can vary in size. Oops, there we go. Okay, but a molecule, a molecule has a beginning and an end. It has a fixed size. All right, so there's an introduction to um, valence electrons and how we can use our understanding of them to um, discern between ionic and covalent compounds. And then um, on this last page here, Let's look and practice this to make sure we're comfortable um, applying this knowledge. All right, so first off, right, um, when we look at the periodic table, pay attention to that stair-stepped line. All right, see the number of valence electrons at the top of each group. Um, remember that hydrogen can all, is a non-metal. You wanna see it in both places. And then as we come up, so, well, you'll just have to look at your periodic table. I won't be able to show you the whole thing, right? So if we look here, we see calcium, it's a metal, and bromide is a nonmetal, so this is an ionic compound. When we look at this next one, right, carbon, well, let's see if we can... Right, there's carbon and hydrogen and oxygen. So all nonmetals, that makes it covalent. All right, and then last but not least, here's our buddy sodium, which we know is a, an alkali metal, and sulfide. So we have sodium plus one, so we're gonna need two of those. And then we have our buddy sulfide. So we have our, once again, our metal and our non-metal. So we know it's ionic. All righty. So um, that concludes our introduction to valence electrons and the octet rule. Um, now would be a good time to work a couple post-video practice problems.